Probably the most important aspect of Bootstrap is its grid system, which is what we use to create our responsive layout. On our website, let's say for now, we want to start filling this out by creating one main content area, and we'll put some content in there, and a smaller sidebar over here. Let's go to our file. In Bootstrap, first off, we need to make sure that we're working within a container class div, which we are. And so now let's go below this h1 header and create a div with the class row. We can go ahead and close that. This is going to be one large div that contains both the main area as well as the sidebar. So inside this row, we're going to create divs for each of those. We're not going to give them any classes quite yet. So go ahead and just open and close a div. This first one is for our main content. And then below that, we'll do the same thing, which we're going to use for our sidebar. Now let's put a little bit of content in these divs. So this first one for our main content, let's give this an H2 header. And we could write something like what Trust Hub can do for you. And then I'm going to go to blindtextgenerator.com and just grab a chunk of text from here. In fact, I'll make this, I'll just grab about this much, open a paragraph tag, paste that in, and make sure you close your paragraph tag. Then for our second div, which is eventually going to be our sidebar, we'll have another h2 header. And we can just put something generic like our team. Back at blind text generate, I'm going to grab a little bit less text this time, since this is going in a smaller area. Open up a paragraph tag, paste that in, and close the paragraph tag. So save this. Go back to your website, refresh, and it'll look like this right now. Obviously, this isn't the layout we want, but we're going to fix that in just a second. Make sure your website looks like this. If it doesn't, then just go back and make sure you have all of your HTML tags nested and closed properly. And then we're going to go back to getbootstrap.com and take a look at something. Let's click on CSS. Over here in the sidebar, we're going to click Grid System. And scroll down a little bit until you see the Media Queries section. And specifically below that, the Grid Options section. This is a very important part of Bootstrap. And it probably looks and will sound complicated as I explain it. But don't worry, once we start actually working with it, it'll make sense very quickly. So there are two main things you have to remember when working with Bootstrap's grid system. First, Bootstrap classifies screen sizes into four types. Extra small, small, medium, and large. Extra small is for phones. Small is for tablets, like an iPad. Medium is for desktop monitors. And large is just for larger desktop monitors. And it shows you the number of pixels that it's working with for each of these sizes. Extra small just encompasses anything below 768. So keep that in mind. The second thing to remember is that Bootstrap works with a 12 column grid system. So what that basically means is that when you're creating your site with Bootstrap, you want to imagine your entire web page being divided into 12 columns and any div or block level element within the layout of your page comprises some number of those 12 columns. So for instance, we have our main content here and what's going to be our sidebar here. If we want this main content to be 75% of the width of our page and the sidebar to be the remaining 25, then this main content would be nine of those 12 columns, 75%. 
and the sidebar would be the remaining three of those 12 columns. Looking back over at getbootstrap.com, here's an example of a content area that spans eight columns next to one that spans four. Here's an example of three areas that each span four of the 12 columns divided equally. Here's two equal size areas that are both six. And here's 12 that are all one column. Horizontally, this is how wide they would be compared to the width of the whole page. So when we're telling our site how big we want each of these areas to be, the way we do that is we give the divs a class starting with extra small, small, medium, or large, XS, SM, MD, or LG for whatever size we're working with. And then for that size of a screen, we tell it how many columns we want it to span. Eight, four, one, six, five, whatever. Whenever you use small, for instance, it will apply the same number of columns for whatever number we put here for small and anything larger than that. Unless you also specify something different for one of the larger classes, in which case it will override that. So again, that probably sounds a little bit confusing, but let's take a look and see how simple it is in action. So back to our HTML file. Let's find this first div here that again, we want to be our main content area. Let's give this the class call dash MD for medium, a medium sized desktop screen, dash eight or dash nine rather for 75% of the page. Close our quotation mark. What this is saying is that for all screen sizes, medium and larger, basically just for desktop screen sizes, we want this main content area to span nine of the 12 columns to take up 75% of the width of the page. For anything smaller than that, it's going to take up the entire page. Now let's go down to our second div, the one right above our team header. This is our sidebar. We're going to give this the class call dash medium or dash MD rather dash three. Close our quotation mark. This is saying for any desktop screen that's medium or large, this div is going to span the remaining three of those 12 columns. And for anything smaller than that, it's going to take up all 12. So if we view this on a small screen, instead of being side by side, it's going to bump the Our Team section, the sidebar section below the main content. But for medium sized screens and up, it's going to place them side by side with the main content area taking up nine columns and the sidebar taking up three of those columns. Let's see this in action. Go ahead and save that. Go back to your website. Refresh. Now we're starting to get something of a layout. I'm working on a medium screen. So you can see that if we had divided this up into 12 columns, our main content area would be taking up nine of them, 75% of the screen. And here's our sidebar taking up the remaining three. Now, if I were to resize the window into something tablet or mobile size, watch what happens. Here we're at tablet size. It starts bumping things below each other, and then it'll keep that no matter how far we go for mobile. Now we're starting to get into the really cool stuff that Bootstrap can do. Let's go back to our file very quickly. And I want to emphasize that you can also add your own custom classes and IDs. And that won't mess up Bootstrap or anything. It won't conflict with anything unless you happen to use a class that Bootstrap already has in its CSS file. So you just want to be careful of that. But we could, for instance, give this the ID 
main content. And then down here for our sidebar, we can give this the ID sidebar. And that's not going to mess anything up. Save that, go back to your site, refresh. Still looks just the same. It still responds just the same. So you can add all of your own stuff as well, as long as you don't use any names that Bootstrap is already using. So Bootstrap doesn't get in the way of what you want to add on. It just provides a lot of helpful things for you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel right now before you do anything else. Click on the subscribe button. We also want to hear from you. Do you have any questions? Leave a comment below this video. We try to answer every question.